The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Over 250 CEOs from South Africa's largest corporates last week traded in boardroom suits for cardboard boxes, spending 12 hours on the streets of Johannesburg as part of an initiative to raise some 25 million rand for the charity Girls and Boys Town and bring awareness to the plight of the homeless in Africa's most financially dominant metropole. Crema Media's Natalie Grieve braved the high felt winter temperatures to find out more about this unique fundraising event. The inaugural 702 Sun International CEO Sleepout, which took place in Santon between 6 p.m. last Thursday and 6 a.m. last Friday morning, challenged Gauteng's business elite and political leadership to remain exposed to the elements on one of the coldest and longest nights of the year, equipped only with a sleeping bag, basic toiletry bag, warm clothing and individual cardboard street shelters. Each participant was required to raise a minimum of 100,000 rand, but was encouraged to raise further funding through additional challenges that involved removing items of clothing or remaining barefoot throughout the 12-hour challenge, which saw temperatures drop to 3 degrees. Participants, including Johannesburg Mayor Parks Tau and Gauteng Premier David Makura, were barred from bringing luxury bedding items or food and were only provided with soup and coffee. Speaking to Engineering News Online at the event on Thursday evening, Tao lauded the number of CEOs that had taken it upon themselves to contribute towards the cause of combating homelessness, particularly given the degree of inequality in South Africa. So many CEOs have taken it upon themselves to contribute to this particularly important cause. The challenge of uh, people sleeping on the streets of Johannesburg and throughout the world is quite significant and the fact that we collectively are sitting here and saying what contribution can we make, both as the public and private se sector to address their plight, I think is a particularly good statement. I think that the fact that the private sector has come on board and said, how can we now lend a hand to this particularly important issue, is a great statement for South Africa and for the world, because this initiative is not just a South African initiative, it's an in international initiative, and we need to mobilize more and more cities and more and more captains of industry to contribute towards this particularly important issue. I'll be here for the whole night. I'll leave at 6 o'clock in the morning like everybody else. Um, but I think uh, at this rate, the camaraderie is good, everybody is interacting. I suspect very few people will actually fall asleep tonight. According to Tao, South Africa's largest metropole attracted over 10,000 migrants every month, many of whom were unable to find adequate work and accommodation and were rendered destitute. He estimated there to be around 6,000 people sleeping on the streets of Johannesburg every night. Also adding his support, Makura said partnership between the private sector and government, as engendered by the CEO Sleepout, was the most effective way to deal with the country's fundamental social and economic challenges. We in government are doing a lot to try and, and assist uh, the vulnerable in our society and in our communities, but government alone will not succeed. So we always need a partnership and I think I'm here tonight uh, about this partnership between between government and businesses to help address the fundamental social and economic problems that our country faces. Tomorrow I'm working, I'm in the legislature tomorrow in the morning. I leave from here, go home and have a shower and change and dress properly. You know, in the legislature, I can't go into the legislature like this. Uh, I must get to the legislature and appear there as if I had a good night's sleep. Among the CEO Sleepout's private sector representatives, Goldfield CEO Nick Holland lamented the apparent misconception that CEOs remained removed from the economic struggles facing many South Africans. I'm really pleased that we could help in a small way and uh, just show some force along with our colleagues across Johannesburg to, to assist. Very good cause. So one of the things we've had to do in our jobs one time or another is work all night. Um, so we've had all-nighters when we didn't get any sleep. Um, so we've done it before, but we haven't done it outside. 
people often think CEOs of companies are um, living in their ivory towers, they don't care about what happens, but I think the world has changed over the last 10 years. Mining sector counterpart and Anglo-American Platinum or Amplat CEO Chris Griffith said his attendance was an extension of Amplat's broad corporate social investment program, which had seen the company establishing youth and care centres in areas surrounding its northwest-based platinum operations. The cause to raise awareness both for homelessness and also to raise awareness for girls in Boys Town. I think that was a really, a really amazing um, cause in the first place. But secondly, I think it was great the opportunity to raise money. So first, you know, awareness is all great, but we, you know, being part of a uh, of a cause like this can raise over 20 million rand for Boys and Girls Town. I think it's really amazing, and it's actually for that reason. Uh, I, I chose to be part of it. I think everyone's worried that the CEOs are very soft. No, I think we'll be fine and uh, we actually need the temperature to drop a bit so that we don't get too hot with all these layers that we already have. No, I think we'll be fine and I'm, you know, I'm sure in the early hours of the morning uh, we'll complain a bit but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Lonman CEO Ben Magara described the event as an opportunity for those in positions of leadership to give back to the less privileged. I really felt it's a good cause and I think it's an opportunity for us who have had the fortunate opportunities we have got to give back to the less privileged. I grew up poor. I have experienced this difficult and cold winters when I was young. I know how it felt but coming back here was like taking me back and grounding me to what it actually is and what it's all about. I'm expected to be in the office and uh, my uh, boss, my PA Melody, has already booked me for my first meeting at 9 o'clock. So I will rush home, take a shower, because she needs me clean and ready for tomorrow morning. Nissan CEO Mike Whitfield, who raised some 250,000 rand for the CEO sleepout, said that while he regarded his presence at the event as a small gesture, he hoped it would raise awareness for an important cause. It's very early, but I think it's going to be a fantastic experience. Uh, something very different and takes one out of one's comfort zone. But something I'm looking forward to and uh, we live in a crazy world. Tonight uh, I'll be sleeping on the street here and tomorrow night I'm on a plane at 37,000 feet flying somewhere else. So it's going to be a great uh, experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Thursday's CEO Sleepout coincided with Sleepout events held across Australia and would be followed by future Sleepouts in Cape Town, Durban and Port Elizabeth in 2016. Other news making headlines this week, engineering and electronics company Bosch brought out its new range of cordless power tools and has launched a free mobile app that uses data from its measuring devices. Skulk Berger has the story. Bosch South Africa training manager Peter DeBrain demonstrated a few of the functions of the company's 36 volt cordless hammer, GCM8 circular saw, detection device, measuring devices and the new mobile app. When you're drilling into walls, especially when you've got reinforcing, the, you know, there's always that possibility that you can jam. So what we've done is we've put some protection in and it's called anti-rotation. So electronically, it literally feels that resistance and it cuts the machine. Well, you know what, it's a combination of machine and having the right machine plus also the right quality blade. So we, the machine that we're looking at here is, you know, it, it's a sliding compound, so it does a wider area, but then also it's a slow start, so it doesn't jerk in your hands. And then with the blades having tungsten carbide uh, tips, you can make them very, very sharp. And then also we balance them really well so that you get very little vibration. And that then gives you those really, really accurate cuts. These machines pick up rebar, it picks up uh, copper water pipes, it'll pick up electricity, and for the first time, plastic water pipes as well. They become really intuitive. So it actually it shows you step for step in the actual machine with a tutorial on how to take these measurements. And then also we've put some really nice functions where the machine automatically calculates square meters for you, it calculates cubic meters, and it even has built-in spirit levels. Industrial, they have, a, they have a lot more applications that they need to do. So we make from 30 meters right up to 250 meters. And then also we've put in uh, uh, you know, a lot more functions, a lot easier to use. All you need now is your phone or your iPad and your actual device and when you come out to the customer's house you can take photos or if you have the floor plan you can open up the floor plan you can take your measurements there and you, the time saving is you don't have to go back to the office. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.